channel now we are going to discuss about the common peroneal nerve actually the root value of common peroneal nerve is l4 l5 s1 and s2 so let us see what is its course actually it is the smallest uh, terminal branch of our sciatic nerve if you remember a sciatic nerve in the popliteal fossa divides into the tibial nerve and the common peroneal nerve of course the common peroneal nerve have one more name that is a fibular nerve common fibular nerve so this common peroneal nerve is the smallest terminal branch of sciatic nerve and it lies in the same superficial plane as the tibial nerve it is mainly extending from the superior angle of fossa that is superior angle of uh, popliteal fossa to the lateral angle you can see from here it is coming laterally along the medial border of biceps femoris so it will travel along the medial border of the biceps femoris so how to find that it is uh, this common peroneal nerve is traveling on the medial side uh, you can see like first it is coming from the back that is the posterior side of popliteal fossa next it runs laterally after that it turns uh, around the fibula nucleus if you see this is a fibula so actually it is winding around the posterior lateral aspect of fibula and pierce is the peroneus longus muscle because here is the peroneus longus you can see this is a muscular branch for the peroneus longus muscle so this now appears as the peroneus longus and divides into the superficial and deep peroneal nerves so in turn they are divided into superficial and deep you can see here it is mentioned this is a superficial peroneal nerve and this is the deep peroneal nerve so mainly by means of peroneus longus muscle only it is divided into superficial and deep peroneal nerve so now let us check out its branches this common peroneal nerve have two cutaneous branches one is a lateral cutaneous nerve of calf you can see this uh, violet color this is the lateral cutaneous nerve of calf which mainly descends to supply the skin over upper two thirds of lateral side of the leg so how we can determine this is as a lateral side of the leg because you can see the fibula bone so fibula side is the lateral side of the bone next coming to the peroneal communicating nerve so peroneal communicating uh, nerve arises in upper part of fossa runs on posterior lateral aspect of the calf and joins the sural nerve it will in turn join with the sural nerve okay that is a peroneal communicating nerve which mainly arises in this part in upper part of the fossa runs on posterior lateral aspect of calf joins with the sural nerve okay so it gives also the superior lateral genicular now you can see this is a superior lateral genicular now actually this uh no, sorry this is artery but there's a nerve like this which is uh, mainly an articular branch so in this diagram you can observe this is a superior lateral genicular now uh, which is an articular branch which mainly accompanies an artery of the same name and lies above the lateral condyle of femur okay so this is a lateral side hence the superior lateral genicular next comes the inferior lateral genicular now you can see here this is also running with the artery of the same name to the lateral aspect of knee joint above the head of fibula okay the next comes the recurrent genicular now or also called recurrent fibular now which is arising where the common peroneal now in turn divides into superficial and deep peroneal nerves at that site only this now is arising and it ascends anterior to the knee joint and supplies tibialis anterior muscle in addition to the knee joint next coming to the muscular branches uh, that do not arise from this now however it may give branch to short head of only the biceps femoris muscle okay so this is all about the common peroneal nerve course and its branches now let us see with the clinical anatomy which is related to this so this nerve common peroneal nerve can be injured uh, easily by stick blow on the posterior lateral aspect of neck of fibula so here so here if there is any injury at the neck of fibula then this nerve will get affected since its two terminal branches that is the superficial and peroneal mainly supplies ureters of foot and also the deep peroneal supplies dorsiflexus so this action is all lost thus condition is called foot drop so when are the common peroneal nerve injures then it will lead to foot drop next a common peroneal nerve can be palpated against the posterior lateral side of neck of fibula and it may be injured in this area so it is a most frequently injured nerve in the lower limb so in the lower limb in the lower limb if anyone asks what now is most commonly injured that is our common peroneal nerve or also called as common fibular nerve so now it's time to discuss about the 
posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh and also genicular branch of optic retina in another diagram so in this diagram you can clearly observe the posterior cutaneous nerve of thigh actually it is a content of upper half of popliteal fossa it pierces the deep fascia about the middle of the fossa and it mainly supplies the skin up to the middle of the back of the legs up to here it supplies so here you can see the genicular branch of obturator now which is actually the continuation of posterior division of obturator now uh, so this is the anterior division you know we have an obturator now anterior division posterior division right so in this diagram you can see this is the obturator now this is its anterior branch and this is its posterior branch mainly by means of obturator externus muscle it is divided into anterior and posterior branch so the continuation of posterior division of obturator now runs on posterior surface of popliteal artery it pierces the oblique popliteal ligament and mainly supplies the capsule of knee joint okay next uh, we'll discuss about the popliteal lymph nodes actually in the in this diagram it's not there but normally we'll discuss about that actually uh, Popliteal lymph nodes lie deep to the deep fascia, especially near the termination of small saphenous vein. So what I am saying, they lie deep to the deep fascia near termination of small saphenous vein. For example, if this is the vein, the small saphenous vein, I will show that diagram. So here you can see the small saphenous vein, it is terminating into the tibial vein and next it convert into popliteal vein. So here you have mainly this uh, popliteal lymph nodes okay at the rate where small saphenous vein is terminating okay now let us check out the anastomosis around the knee joint actually this is a complicated arterial network if you see it is mainly situated around the uh, patella right around the lower end of femur and upper end of tibia the network is divisible into the superficial and deep part superficial and deep part okay uh, the superficial lies mainly partly in superficial fascia around the patella and partly in the fat behind ligamentum patellae. The deep part lies on the femur and on the tibia all around the adjoining articular surfaces. Okay, So it is formed mainly medially by uh, descending genicular or uh, descending genicular artery right and you have the superior medial genicular artery and you have the inferior medial genicular artery right so these are all the arteries which are on the medial side so how to remember them descending genicular superior medial genicular inferior medial genicular very simple descending genicular superior medial genicular inferior medial genicular on the medial side next if you see on the lateral side you have again the descending branch of lateral circumflex femoral artery you have the superior lateral genicular inferior lateral genicular anterior tibial uh, artery right mainly you have the anterior tibial recurrent artery and also posterior tibial recurrent also will be on this side and also circumflex fibular artery so all those will form lateral side so in this diagram there are two arteries which are missing that is uh, posterior tibial recurrent and circumflex fibular arteries Okay. here anterior recurrent tibial here the recurrent word is missing okay so these are all the lateral arteries so medial lateral arteries form longitudinal anastomosis on each side of patella the longitudinal anastomosis are interconnected to form transverse anastomosis if you see these are forming longitudinal anastomosis here also they are forming longitudinal anastomosis this longitudinal anastomosis are connected by transverse anastomosis around the patella so just above and below the patella and also above the tibial tuberosity so this is called as knee joint anastomosis so mainly formed by this genicular arteries uh, descending genicular artery superior medial genicular artery inferior medial genicular artery and anterior tibial recurrent artery on the uh, medial side on the lateral side you have descending circumflex branch of femoral artery superior lateral genicular artery inferior lateral genicular artery and anterior tibial artery so by this we completed this lesson of our popliteal fossa next we'll start with a new one